Hello everyone, James Donaldson here. This is a review of the Cry Precision gun clip. And, before I cut away, it's also a review of the knockoff. Hello everyone, um, so yes, this is a review of the Cry Gun Clip and the Knock Off Gun Clip. Jumping into the meat and potatoes, let's talk ergonomics. So, the draw. So there you have it. Um, you can make it smooth with practice. Now I will say it is kind of a perishable skill. I've had my smoother draws when I've been practicing with it. When I don't practice with it, my draws get a little less smooth. Um, and as fast as I can get with it, I'm always going to be faster with another holster. But there's reasons for that, obviously, because the retention is much better, which we'll talk about, than other holsters. So, as with anything, the guns themselves, suppressors, holsters, and then things in other avenues, when you're souping up cars, there's always going to be a give and a take. You're always going to lose something to gain something else. That's just how life works. So, um, going into more details, uh, the sound was something I, I started taking into account, but honestly, it's really not any more noisy than drawing or replacing the pistol in one of these other holsters. So... I really have taken sound off my list of things to worry about because they're all going to make some sound. It's a holster. It's a solid object contacting a solid object um, and kind of them knocking into each other. So I would just discount that altogether. Anyway, moving next, um, I will say that the knockoff from the get go was easier to unsnap. Um, so there you have it. Now, the cry has loosened up a little bit and got a little easier to snap. I don't think that means it's like wearing out faster or anything. I think it's just you had to kind of wear it in, and now it's worn in because I haven't noticed it continue to get easier to snap, and it's still a little harder to unsnap than this one, uh, the knockoff, which the knockoff, I don't even have a name brand from it. So um, I will also say that this material is a little, I won't call it flimsy, I want to say more flexible than this one. I don't think that's an issue. I think it's just different materials. I think that this one, <laughs> it's only like $5 cheaper, which I'm laughing about because this is right around $30. A Cry Precision product. If you're familiar with Cry Precision, well, if you're not familiar with Cry Precision, they make extremely expensive things. And whether they're worth it or not, they're very expensive. So you're lucky to get that stuff issued to you or people save their money and buy those things. But either way, this is from a company that's renowned. It'd be like the Rolex. It'd be like Rolex selling a watch for $100. Like, you almost just want to buy it to, to check it out, even if it's terrible, which this is definitely not, uh, which we we'll, could talk about more. So, um, again, I think it's just a difference of materials, and I'm also not sucking up to cry. For those of you that would say, well, he's just sucking up to cry, saying he still has confidence in it, even though it's flimsier. Um... Cry has ignored emails I've sent them about other projects. They don't know who I am, and I guarantee they have very little interest in the civilian market. So for them to even see this video and care at all about what I say, I'd be very surprised. Um, and maybe I'm being a little harsh, but uh, I really doubt they have interest there. They seem to me to be a company that goes after military contracts and to varying degrees we're lucky enough that they sell their stuff to civilians. So. Again, um, I just kind of use them interchangeably depending on what I'm doing. I like I got this in tan because this only came in black, so there I can kind of choose between color. But overall, they function the same. 
parts wise they're pretty much the same the hardware is a little more robust on the cry I will say um, which we'll talk about the screw in here but anyway moving on from uh, the difference between the two uh, just to understand that I've used this a lot more so um, things most of what I'm saying is going to apply to this and maybe this I just couldn't test them at the same time please understand that but I will also add that since this is only five dollars more just buy the cry you can get it in black or tan just buy the cry just just to have it anyway I, I hope you buy it before the end of this video so uh, let's talk about replacing this um, it's well you'll see As you can see, it takes a little finesse, a little finagling, kind of like drawing, um, but again, there's really good reasons for this. And I will say that I've done a lot of research, I've had experiences on my own, I just can't imagine any, definitely not very many, but probably, really I can't imagine any scenarios where someone's in danger if you don't holster your weapon quickly. The danger is in needing to unholster your weapon, typically. Um, I just can't imagine a scenario where, oh my gosh, I need to holster my weapon now. And even then, with practice, you can get pretty quick. So, moving on to really exciting things. Um, I've been carrying this con for concealment outside the waistband, um, attaching it to my belt, and it has done pretty well. Basically, I've used this, and it's 1726, or as I call it, the Glock 26L, configuration except um, I use no threaded barrel like I do when I carry appendix and I also swap out the X300 and I use this XC1 from Surefire so it doesn't stick out past so that way with my jacket things aren't sticking out from under the jacket I'm telling you all this because um, one of the things I evaluate these these holsters are is when the gun is not in there what the holster is like is it flopping around is it crazy is it making a bunch of noise does the integrity of the holster depend on the gun being in it? Well, so far the answer has been no, especially with this. Um, because this is a pain to put on your belt, um, whereas other holsters I'll pop off how they're mounted on me if I'm carrying out concealed outside the waistband or just totally unconcealed, um, I can pop the holster off, put the gun in my truck, drive, holster's not in the way, get out, pop the holster on, gun in, good to go. Um, for this, I simply take the gun off of it, put the gun where it goes in my truck and then this does not stick into the seat bolster it doesn't interfere with the seat belt I can just leave this on and have no problem and then of course throw the gun right on it which is actually really more convenient than taking the holster and the gun off of me and on me every time so I actually like that feature a lot now to put it on and off there's a screw here that you loosen and then it allows these jaws to open and close. And so that is how you mount it to Molly or your belt uh, or I'll roll in some pictures of it mounted to my Mystery Ranch rucksack which I'm going to talk about. Uh, so you can see there um, it actually mounts to uh, it's got the three prongs they really mount to three places so instead of all four kind of prongs or jaws or whatever you want to call them biting down is only three but that has been still very effective and of course you can turn this so you can if you loosen it you can turn it so you can have whatever cant or no cant or however this is mounting to something you can orient the gun so that it's going to be set up for you so the versatility of the mounting um, while I might be able to but I haven't been able to experiment with it yet I, uh, as, as far as I know I haven't tried no one else I know of has tried to put this on a QLS system uh, which will be a test I'll do later, but outside of that I would say the mounting is still pretty versatile, especially that you can position the gun literally upside down or any which way you want. The jaws will grip molly or a belt or, or other materials such as the rucksack I mentioned. Um, I, th I think that's really a big win for this holster or others. Um, I don't think... Now I will say getting it on your belt is difficult. <laughs> it's a struggle. I do. I have gotten better at it since since doing it more since I've been uh, carrying outside the waist belt, uh, waistband rather. But um, 
it, it is not easy. It is not like just looping it onto your belt. So, there is that. But I will say, once it's on, it is on there. It is sturdy. Good to go. Um, so next, retention. So, um, it retains everything. I can, of course, pop my 17L on there. Um, and it's got it. So, obviously. Now, there's a caveat before we even get to caveats and variables. Um, I was carrying my Glock 17. I don't remember which grip I had on it. Pretty irrelevant. Um, didn't have a can on it. Had the light and X300. And um, I've been carrying this on my Mystery Ranch rucksack because I figure it's a good way to get time in with the holster. And uh, basically, I've been going... Uh, not not the full 12, but varying amounts of miles. They were from 4 to 6, typically. Um, kind of is what I have time for. And so, at one point, I went to take off, take the 17 out, and this flap was open. Now, I actually look back, and I can remember wondering when I heard the button snap, if I noticed it sounded different, but I didn't really think too much of it to later, and now I always make sure it's totally snapped on, but I walked untold miles with this unsecure. But I will say that, I mean the retention is, it's there. So um, not only does the retention, is the retention great like that, pretty much unbeatable, but even in this. Uh, I don't know what you call status or whatever you want to say. Um, obviously, the retention is quite good. So, uh, if you had a need in whatever you're doing when you're using this holster, if you needed it to be unbuttoned and ready for whatever reason, um, this is actually one of those gray areas where you could do it if you really wanted to. If what you were doing made it necessary, you could do this. So, um, anyway, retention, really second to none. Obviously, it's better retention than any normal holster, probably, uh, depending on what you're looking at. So, moving on to caveats and variables. Weapon variety is horrible and okay at the same time. So, not a lot of holsters will holster my 17L. So, that's great. But basically, this will holster any... Glock has a 9mm or 40 frame. So, at a holster Glock 26, 19, 17, 34, 17 L, Glock 27, Glock 23, Glock 22, Glock 35, I think the 24 is their long slide. Anyway, the point is that it, you can't holster any other weapon. You can't do the large frame Glocks, like the 21 or the 20 or the 40. I have a Glock 40. Currently, this is the only holster that I can holster it in. Um, so, that is, um, it's, it's a bummer and a blessing. I, I have mostly 9mm Glocks, so not the end of the world for me. However, uh, if I was to get some other guns, it would be great to have this as an option, and you just don't. So, uh, I would love it if Cry at least made one that was for the bigger frame Glocks. I'd, I'd buy it immediately, especially considering how inexpensive this one is. Uh, I would buy it the second it came out. I, I would probably put money down if they said they were doing it and they had it on order. I, I would do that, absolutely. That's how much I like this holster. But they don't do that, so. Uh, too bad for me. Anyway, um, so if you can get past, it's, so if, if you don't own Glocks, if you're not a Glock fanboy, you don't have any, or if the one you have is large frame, you can't use this holster with any of your guns. I'm sorry. Um, but if you have at least one smaller frame Glock, you're in business. And if you're like me and you have several Glocks, this is really nice. Plus how it's low profile. It doesn't flap around, like I said, when it's, um, when it's static and just sitting there. So it keeps the gun right on your belt. So um, this is really great to have. 
if you have a Glock in a small frame. Now, the other part of this that's really huge is um, these other two suppressed pistol holsters require you to have an X300 weapon light to varying degrees. So, the issue is with an Osprey and a Glock with its low bore axis, if you have a uh, Glock shorter than a 34, it will not let you use an Osprey with an X300 unless you cant it or put it on upside down or something like that. So, um, with that in mind, of course with the cry, because of how it attaches to your weapon, it is Osprey friendly. In this case, um, of course I could use no weapon light, which is nice. Um, where's the other two? Like I said, you have to have an X300 specifically. But I could do no weapon light, I could do no can, I can do an Osprey, which even if, so for instance, putting my 17L in these, you still can't use an Osprey because of how the end part works at the bottom of the holster. So this is pretty much the only Osprey friendly holster, which is actually a really great thing, and very convenient. Um, so of course, Glock 19 with an XC1 and an Osprey. And then I can throw in my Glock 17 with the Surefire X300 and a Gemtech suppressor. And then, of course, I've got a no suppressor or light. So the versatility as far as light and suppressor is outstanding. But beyond that, and this, this next part is really true with these other two as well, is um, this wraps around and stops right past the line for the MOS plate. So that means that you can put any optic on this, just like you can those, and of course you can do any weapon sight. So, that is also very convenient as far as, um, you know, re really the sky being the limit as far as what you put on it. It's not quite at the level of the Armadillo, because the Armadillo, where I was saying, um, and you don't even have to have a suppressed pistol for this holster, which is nice as well. But, of course, I said basically you put a telescope on the top of your gun, it won't matter. You're in the ballpark with that, but not quite there. Now, this is probably, I hesitate to say the most stable, I still have more testing. But, um, it requires a suppressor to be used with the holster. So, there is that. Now, um, that really sums it all up for caveats and variables. So going into the clothes, um, this is a very good holster for a shooter who has at least one Glock. And I know some of my friends, uh, one in particular has a couple Glocks, but he does have a variety of cans. So with his T-Rex arms, this gets adjusted to fit um, with a particular weapon type and the can on it. So if I got a skinnier can than this, I would have to reshape this or probably buy another one, so you're stacking up cans. As I said, this, you can change out lights, cans, all that. Your variety of accessories makes no difference. That is a very big benefit to guys that have all kinds of gear and accessories. And then, uh, of course, that does require that they have a Glock in a short or small frame, but that's that. Um, the price, for all the benefits that this has, even if you don't own a can, and you're just looking for a, a half-decent Glock holster for something out in the field, or you're in the military and you're allowed to, you know, in your unit, buy your own holster and you guys are issued Glocks, I'd get one of these, at least to have, even if it's not your primary holster. But, but again, the, the, the benefits and the cost make this basically any Glock owner should own one of these. So I hope you bought one by now. If not, get on it. Um, you won't be disappointed especially because I've highlighted any negatives you might see. So, um, that's it for this review. It's a glare, glaring review, glowing review. Um, sorry, it's, it's getting late. But um, I really hope you find use for this holster, buy this holster, and enjoy it as much as I have. This is definitely something that I can see going back to more and more, especially when I take sidearms hunting. Um, and again, cry if you make this for the larger frame Glocks. I will buy one instantly. Call me when you got it on the design program in your computer, and I'll give you my credit, whatever it takes. I want another one of these for my larger frames. So, guys, sorry for all the gushing. I hope you learned stuff. I hope this was at least helpful. 
and you making a decision whether you're interested in a product like this or not. So, if you like the video, please actually like it down on the with the little thumbs up button down below. Of course, subscribe to my channel and Patreon is a good way to support me. Again, I'm just about giving knowledge back to everybody else. I like doing these studies, trying out different products, seeing what works for me, and then imparting that knowledge to the gun community who I have benefited from other people's knowledge. So I'm just trying to give back. Thank you again so much for watching and for your time. And remember, until next time, keep your composure.